that's waiting up for me that I call my own through the dark through the door through when no one's been before but it feels like home they can say they can say it all so crazy they can say, they can say I lost my mind I don't care, I don't care, so call me crazy We can live in the world that we decide Cause every night I lie in bed The brightest colors fill my head A million dreams are keeping me away of what the world could be A vision of the one I see A million dream is all it's gonna take A million dreams for the world we gonna make There's a house we can build Every room inside is filled with things from far away The special things I can part Is one there to make you smile On the rainy day They can say, they can say it's all so crazy They can say, they can say we lost our minds I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy Run away to the world that we decide Every night I lie in bed The brightest color fill my head A million dreams are keeping me away The thing of what the world could be a vision of the one I see A million dream is always gonna take A million dreams for the world we gonna make However big, however small Let me be a part of it all Just color fill my head A million dreams are keeping me awake Do what the world could be A wish of the one I see A million dream is all it's gonna take A million dreams for the world we gonna make And that's my video inspiration, okay? Inspirational video that I prepare for this topic about my lecture, how to achieve the long-term success of prosthetic implant treatment and management of complications. Because we know that we cannot work alone. This is my team. I call this is my dental implant universe because all of them are significantly important to me. All of many brilliant surgeons, one of them will be here, Professor Somshai, and I cannot forget the dental technician that create the beautiful uh, porcelain and the circunia uh, work for me, the product support from many companies that help us when we need their equipment in time of the, uh, in the Im image emergency of patient come, and all my dental assistants that help me to let my work fall smooth. Okay. 
about the dental implant treatment, we expect, everyone expect for the excellent outcome, right? At the delivery visit, we expect the excellent outcome. But how about the long-term success? In contrary, for the implant complication, this is like a converse way, okay? But how to reduce the implant complication for less or for absent to increase the long-term success? This is I'm going to tell you. The implant complication occur from many factors like improper planning, the patient condition, like medical disease, and immediate loading, bone grafting, okay, periimplantitis, sinus sleep, or any kind of complication. But in this morning, I'd like to focus on the malposition of the implant that relate to the prosthodontic complication. All these things I'll relate together is all relevant. In the old day, in the last decades, we focus on the surgical driven implant concept planning. We place the implant where the bone is. So we look for the bone quality and quantity without the opposing teeth, without the jaw relationship, without the adjacent teeth. So this is called the surgical driven. That sometimes gives us an unpredictable result. Nowadays, in this decade, we know about the prosthetic driven implant planning. What is it? We look at the prosthesis first, then we create the proper contour and the size of the prosthesis. Then we place the implant follow the, the prosthesis design. So this is called the crown down approach. We start at the crown and deep to the implant position. That, then from the surgical driven implant concept, I can classify into three uh, Categorize. First is vertical. Sometimes you place the implant too deep or too shallow. If it's too deep, yes, we have a choice. But if it's, you go for too shallow, how could you manage it, right? Second thing, horizontal. Sometimes you place the implant too buckly or too levelly. This is very dangerous in the aesthetic reason. Sometimes you place the implant to go palatally, too palatal. So all of this condition. Last, the third one is a angulation or the direction is wrong. So by these three categories, they create, create uh, unpredictable result. For this example, this is not my case, but actually this case uh, finished the treatment from not Thailand, from another country. But she come to see me do a sheep complaint of crowd on the implant half mobility. So when they take the x-ray, what do you think about this? This is too deep, right? about this position, too deep. And when take the, uh, in the clinical picture, we find that it's go to lingual. So the ship complaint is, is this the screw loosening? What is came from? I think one thing this came from is from the prosthetic design that follow the mouth alignment. This is too lingually position. So how to correct this? Maybe we need to redone or Start from, uh, make it, let's start from at the first. But in this case, this is not my case. So, so it just tight it and check the occlusion. Okay. Second case is my case. This ca kind of case, uh, the surgeon placed the implant, two implant at the left maxilla. And when uh, the, pay, uh, the surgeon sent this case to me, okay, I find that they have many problems. Like first, they follow the bone, but they not create the bone. So it's too deep in vertical. How about the horizontal? When you place the implant like this, he avoid to not uh, damage the root. So the distance is go to this totally. That's why I call the horizontal problem also. And last, if you see the angulation, it's go to buckly in the head of the, uh, of the implant. So we can show it in the model. In this case, I correct the problem by using, at that time, it's five years ago, I used the angle abutment for 25 deg degree compensation. And the design of the prosthesis is like a sprinted with the missile cantilever to manage a horizontal problem, okay? At the delivery visit, I can prescribe, I can deliver the prosthesis. Patient very satisfying. But the question is, how about the long term? 
this case, I follow up for four years. And what I see from, this is the first day picture, and this is after four years. What do you think? Besides the oral hygiene that should improve, I think it's come from the implant position and the prosthetic design also that affect. I will talk later why the bone loss occur and why the ginger were recession occur by the biomechanic reason. So we're looking for the long term, right, in this, in this lecture. How about the longevity and maintenance? How could patient can clean this process easily? It's impossible, right? So I want to talk about the biomechanic that's related to this. About biomechanics, start from the force, the mechanical force that transmit through the crown to the implant and to the biological reaction like bone and soft tissue. The fourth amount is called the magnitude, comply with their direction, it's called the moment or momentum. This momentum creates the stress and the strain around the implant abutment connection. So, what we can control is, we can control by the occlusal skin, the caspal inclination, the design of the crowd, and the implant angulation, which all of them affect to the abutment school stability. So st stability of the abutment school is very important in the long-term success, right? Otherwise, if they have no stability in the process, connect to the implant, the bone lo ball loss will occur. So about the complication, we cannot look over the mechanical and biological complication because all these things, sometimes it's the same thing, relate together in one patient. From the paper in 2015, they categorized the, uh, the biological. First, before six months of the implantation, uh, after the implantation, they call the early biological complication, okay? That non osteointegration, maybe caused from trauma, caused from infection, caused from micro movement. But after that, after six months, we call it late biological complication. What happened is a progressive bone loss after we uh, deliver the prosthesis. The other thing is mechanical complication that's caused from the material that we use, design of the abutment and the implant, the surface characteristic. The most often have occur is a school loosening. And all of the fracture part of the implant, abutment screw, abutment, and the crown. So we're gonna go deep into the first complication of we call mechanical complication. It's school loosening. Very often occur, right? If you uh, practice in the dental implant and you deliver the, deliver the crown, after two years, some patient come back to you with this condition. I like to give the example, one of the case, my case. I take the x-ray at the moment that patient got the abutment and the crown. And after that, 18 months or almost one and a half year, patient come back with their, uh, say to me that they have the crown mobility. Okay, but in this case, she very busy. She's a busy woman. So she lived like that. She's chewing like that for two months. So she come back, come to see me and said, I chew like this for two months. Then I remove the crown and I take the x-ray. What I find is born around this, gone. We call the progressive bone loss, right? This is called as a late biological complication. That's caused from the mechanical complication. So one thing that I want to tell you is just mention that when you talk to the patient at the delivery procedures, Tell them, if this kind of condition happened, feel discomfort, the crowd moving, please come back to see the dentist as soon as possible. Otherwise, it's maybe too late to correct the problem. About the incidence of the school, abutment school loosening. In 2008, Professor Jung reported about 12%. But recently, in 2015, Dr. Saad, Professor Sade reported about 5%, 5.6% of the incidence. It looks like it is decreased the percentage of the occurrence. Why? Maybe uh, the design of the screw was improved, the material of the screw was improved, and the knowledge of the prosthetic implant spread more. So uh, the incident was decreased. About the etiology of the screw loosening, we know that if you do the under torque, it can happen. Pro improper prosthetic fit, heavy occlusal force, 
prosthetic design may be too large or improper, can't deliver, and the crowd size. How to prevent it? You have to do the prop, proper torque to the abutment screw. Check the process is fit every time that you deliver the crown or the prosthesis by x-ray. You have to know about the prosthetic design that influence to the school loosening problem. Avoid cantilever and the night guard. In the balanced condition, patient never came to came, come back to see you. If the clamping force, or I can call it the preload torque force, more than the joint separating force or the occlusal force. The school loosening happened when the joint separating force more than the clamping force or force that we give to the patient. The ethrotic, I mentioned it already. I want to mention about the settering effect. This term, the settering effect, it means when the abutment screw contact with the inner, inner part of the abutment, it's not a smooth surface and it is metal. So when we torque at that area, they create the tension. And by the tension, the metal can elongate a little bit. Then they have the characteristic of elastic recovery. When we shrink down, they shrink down again, they create the micro movement. So the many papers report about this after, after the settering effect occur. The force, the period force that you talk to the abutment screw decrease up to 10%. So when the reduced cramping force occur, the screw loosening can happen. So what we can control as a prosthodontist? Recommend for the double torque. You cannot just only do the single torque because the settling effect. So double torque is very important. And before, uh, after you do the first talk, wait for 10 to 15 minutes. Let the patient go to the x-ray, and after that, come back to do the second torque, and then you can close the screw access and give the patient the delivery. So the small thing become the big part, such as this, the abutment screw configuration or shape. That uh, the important for the retention and the stability of the whole prosthetic implant. One paper that's very interesting, they have the question like us, that's uh, how about the design of the screw important? They look at the three factors for the preload force. First, this is number of the thread at the end of the screw. Second is about abutment screw head, head angle. Third is the tightening torque. For the thread, number of the thread is start in this research, start from one to seven thread. Angle of the head is start from 30 to 180 degree, and tightening torque 15 to 35. The result showed that the thread is non-significant influence to the preload force. Something uh, maybe uh, did not uh, happen like this, okay? Second thing about the degree, yes, it's significant for the preload force. Look at the table. If you want to choose the improper or ideal degree, you should use more than 1 and 20, up to 1 and 80 degree. Otherwise, this research showed that if they're less than 1 and 20, the force, the preload force is less than the, it should be, okay? Second, uh, the third thing is about the tightening torque. This is very uh, easy way. So if you, it means that if you give more torque, preload torque, the preload torque can stay more and more, okay? So in conclusion, the paper, this paper conclusion, thread ha number had no effect. Only the tightening torque and the screw head angle that affect to the preload force in the long term. Another paper report about this also, Sasada in 2017, she said that only the screw that function is only locate the component, not for the retention and stability. So what we can control if the screw loosening happen? First is prosthetic design, yeah, small occlusal surface area, shallow cast inclination, proper occlusal contact that I mentioned after this. And in the case of a heavy occlusal force and bruxism case, you should prescribe the night guard to the patient. After the school loosening occur, what we can manage, how to manage is it's, we have to retighten again, 
Okay. In the type of the SCRP that stands for the school cement retain processes or cement retain type, it's very easy to access the screw hole and access the tightening torque. But how about the cement processes? If the implant was placed like this and the screw access is at the distal, if the patient finished the crowd maybe more than five years ago and they have this problem occur, how can you remember? How can you find the screw access? This is a problem that many dentists face this, the problem. So one paper, just last year, very new paper, report about this. You have to know how to retrieve and register the screw access hole in the cement retained processes. By the 40 study that they selected, they show us the six techniques for retrievability and nine techniques for registering, uh, registering the screw access hole. Six techniques that they mentioned is all about the design or the type of the retention, like the combination implant crown. Sometimes they use the temporary cement or interim cement. And sometimes they use the fancy design of the, like they have the lingo access slot like this. But for me, the easiest or the practical way, I choose this SCRP design, okay? That you can access the, through the access uh, screw hole every time you want. About the night technique for registering the screw access hole, they show many advantages, like uh, for the two dimension, they, you can prepare the vacuum guide, or you can do the marking like uh, standing on the porcelain work, or you can do the index, silicone index. But as for me, I prefer just only three techniques. First is you can do the uh, staining on the ceramic, or you can do the dent digital photograph and you rec record it in the file, or you can do the x-ray. That's all that I mentioned. About the 3D techniques, you need the CBCT to produce, to create the guide to find the uh, head, head of the uh, screw. So. Simple and practical is the easiest way that we should learn. In this case, the abutment school loosening is occurred after five years. In this case, I just take the x-ray and see the chart record. Sometime in my chart record, I mark that where is the screw access hole, okay? So when you read it back, you, nowadays we do it like, as a digital printing, so is it, is it, it stay forever, so we can know that uh, about where is it, and then we drill and hope to find the access, and then torque and feeling after that. And the most important thing is we now have to protect or to prevent the screw that not losing again. So we check the occlusion properly. For the occlusion, when we check the in the patient, they have the primary and secondary occlusal contact. First, for the axial load. I try to make it at the center or go to the primary occlusal contact in the center of the, uh, where the implant stay, okay? So the force was transmit directly. Second thing, avoid the marginal ridge and cast, even in the centric or eccentric occlusion. About the angulation and biomechanic relation, okay? It's all about this chart, when you place the implant tilted for 30 degree, the force that go to the back hole or labial is go from zero up to 50 Newton. So this is why the back hole ball loss happen. In the anterior zone, the typical of this zone, the bone is like a procry maxillary, right? So it tilted like this. And if you want to do the immediate implant placement, you have to concern about this paper. Dr. Joseph Kahn in 2011, he categorized the sagittal root position into four types, class one to class four. He mentioned that if you want to place the immediate implant placement, you should do, you should do it in class two and class three because they have the bone thickness in labial and palatal. But you should not do in the class four that without any bone labial at the palatal. But how about class one? Class one, it tilt like this. And when we place the implant, we have to place the implant, it drill in the more palatal. So it's like you have to resist the natural force that followed by the natural root. You have to go more palatal. And how about to go palatal? It means that the access screw 
it has to show up in the label way. So unfortunately, 80% of the population is class one. So I try to find many paper and many techniques that can correct this problem for the 80% of our populations. So first, we can use, if the till is like this, we can use the uh, up angle abutment or cosmic abutment, okay? From 15 to 25 degrees, or we can use, uh, we can choose some kind of the implant that they have the platform that shift a little bit in the angle. This is very Larry, I never used this. And we have the new technology that uh, support about this problem. It's called the angulated screw channel or the hexa lobular screwdriver. It just maybe come up, maybe not more than five years from many companies. How it's work? The hexa lobular screwdriver is work like a tooth wheel gear mechanism. So you're not to go straight in 90 degree. You just tilt up to zero to 25 degree and you can screw screw in it, okay? So it changes the direction from the opening access at the labia, go to the more palatal. What, yeah, this is many, many systems try to do this in this recent five years, and it's work. So if, if you place the implant in the anterior, you see, if you don't use this, the access have to open at the labial side, and the problem is the aesthetic reason. So you think, that is, is the dark side of this technique is if in the one of studies show that if the degree is up to 28, they show some wear of the screw driver and the internal part of the screw head. So I recommend that to not more than 25 that we can compensate. About the screw fracture, okay, screw fracture happened maybe about 4% from the etiology such inadequate passive fit the occlusal force is overloading parafunctional habit and sometimes excessive torque that created by our hand. So you should follow the manufacturer recommendation and with the proper set, setting of the torque value and the torque calibrated annually. Okay. The technique to remove the screw that fracture, after it fracture, if it's fracture at the uh, coronal part, we can use the explorer to turn it counterclockwise, or you can use the outer sonic P10 or P5 or the pre piezo to remove it. But the problem, if it break or fracture at the end of the screw part, okay, so very, very difficult. Any com many companies try to create a removal kit. So the concept is they have a small ball burr, okay, to penetrate first, and then they have the pyramid shape to engage it and try to turn counterclockwise slowly. This is, and some company, uh, they concern about the internal face of the implant, so they provide a guide cylinder, okay? About um, abutment fracture is very uh, rarely to use, but sometimes if it happens, you should concern about the excessive occlusal force, the connection design, and the inadequate passive fit also. About abutment selection, and in the old day, we used mostly for the stock abutment, like straight and angle, but now, or even a UCLA or casting technique. Nowadays, we use the customized, like a titanium CAD cam abutment and the type based hybrid processes. This is my personal chart, start from it five years ago. So, show that the stock, I use the stock abutment decrease every year, and I go, it is increasing every year for the customized. Why? I have to tell you like this. For the, in the posterior area, I recommended you use the titanium cat cam milling abutment like this with the circular crown, okay? For the proper uh, access, like a SCRP, we can access retrievability, and for the strength also. And this is compared between the good things of the customite compared to the stock. First is create the proper emergence profile, proper margin of the abutment, thickness of the crown, in the large MD space in the posterior area, you can create the emergence profile, go flare up, and create the proper uh, proximal contact in very deep implant, especially in the immediate implant placement. Sometimes you place the implant very deep to engage the bone. This kind of problem can correct by the customized CAD-CAM abutment. 
For the Jingzhou, sub Jingzhou wall margin, I recommend that in the posterior area, it's 0.5 to 1 millimeters sub Jingzhou wall lead. And in anterior, maybe go up to 1.5 to 2 millimeter for the aesthetic reason. This is the technique that I use to the custom mic to increase more aesthetic. This is called anodization. We give the electrical voltage to the titanium. Then they can change the color from the metal to the gold color. Actually, you have many colors that you can choose. It, it depends on the electrical voltage that you give. Just two or three seconds, it changes, and it can stay for many years. In the other technique is tie-based with the circonial abutment coping. Okay, I will pass it. Created with the nice handwork of the technician, they can stay label layering through the circonia. Even the circonia began the strength and the aesthetic. Uh, Dr. Yes. Ongert, could you please excuse us because we have a special pay today. We have to possibly stop with we, we stop here and then we can continue, right? Afterwards, okay. we can yes. send the people to discuss. Okay. Anyway, I will thank stop you. This. Thank you very much. Dr. Ongert, uh, party visit chat, I think. We were full of knowledge, you see, about the prosthetics, abutment, and the complications, the yes. screw things, and everything. But uh, unfortunately, because of luck of time, we could not listen all of yours. But hopefully, after the second um, this session, maybe we'll like, come back again. Yes, sure. But in the meantime, I'd like to congratulate for your wonderful presentation. And I am sure that people, uh, our younger do doctors, are learning a lot from you. And in future also, you will make some opportunity for our students to visit your place and learn things practically. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, we, we can come back for continue after lunch. Yeah, Thank you. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, our, uh, just to conclude the session, I would like to thank also Dr. Uh, Mossadegh uh, Sattar, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pinu. He's a great man, visiting uh, many countries, Presenting papers. Uh, continue the lecture, okay? At the, in the morning, we stop with this slide, and then can they continue? To co uh, I'll try to compare the in between the three abutments that we use now. What they ask that we call the customized abutment. For the price in in my country, Bangkok, the price of each is not are not different. About the aesthetic, if you take a look, if you're looking for the aesthetic part, for this one, it's a titanium CAD cam. It's not give us the proper aesthetic if the patient show up with the thin tincture wall biotype. But for the Thai base with the circular abutment or the Thai CAD, titanium CAD cam with their anodice in gold color, that, we, that give us the proper aesthetic. For the strength, the titanium CAD cam have no problem, but in some cases show that the tie base with the circular coping give us the problem, they show us the fracture. So in this paper just last year, published by collecting uh, about 231 studies for the, the term of the circular abutment, Okay, they can conclude that this kind of titanium abutment with the circular coping give us the best result in the soft tissue that thinner than two millimeters compared with the titanium abutment. But in five studies show that they have the abutment fracture. So in this paper conclude that in case of the angulation is greater than 20 degrees, we should avoid the circular abutment. Instead, we can use the titanium that anodize into the gold color. It's give us the strength and the more aesthetic. So case selection is very important. Not every case that you can select each one, but you have to know the condition of the patient. The last problem is the implant fracture, right? The implant fracture is a very severe condition, severe problem, if that happened in the late uh, stage. So uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Professor Sapat Pon, she's a periodontist. One day she gave me the, she sent me the picture, and the picture is about two, two cases of her. 
So uh, these two cases is a Thai female, okay? The diameter of an implant is 3.5 millimeters, and both of the patients have the bruxism or parafunctional habit. So uh, the symptoms show with the gingival swelling. So when she opened the flap, she finds the problem that they have a crack line or crack, like a crack tooth. But this is situation is a crack implant or the fracture implant. So she asked me, how can I solve this problem or what is the cause of the implant fractures? I try to answer her like I answer to you now. It is uncommon occurrence, less than 1% that can happen. Normally, it happens in partially edentulous more than totally edentulous because they have opposing teeth that give the force to the fixture. And the symptom is come with often proceed by the repeated abutment school loosening. So this is the sign before the big storm has come, right? Just school loosening, it may be lead to the implant flexure. So they have many factors like biomechanical loading, abutment school configuration, this is very important. Some uh, theory say that if they have the bone loss around the implant, this is a, like a, a factor, one factor is that can create the implant fracture. Titanium grade or manufacturing defect and bruxism or parafunctional habit. All of them, if it happened in the same time, that prone to be the implant fracture. And one paper in 2011, they reported most common cause is like a biomechanical loading and bowl loss. But one important factor more is the inappropriate implant diameter. Look at this, this is inappropriate diameter, that's add more. Nowadays, the type of the fixture that we use is the internal conical connection, right? Right, nowadays. So the weakest point, the weak point of this is the thinness wall around the ICC connection. And we know that at the coronal third of the, this kind of implant, you the highest stress around that area. So I try to find a solution that what is the cause in some case that my friends or my colleagues consult me. I, sh I found one paper that support about this incident. It's published by Dr. Lee in 2016. This study, they looked looking for the effect of the coronal wall thickness on the dental implant for their school joint stability. So they measure at this point. They measure the thickness at the first thread. That's what we call is the thinness, uh, the, the thinness one area. And uh, they measure for the loading capacity and the elastic limit and the coronal dimension and axial displacement also. So by the seven system, like a European, like three of them, then Spline Noble and Strawman, and the four is come from Korean brand, they try to measure the thickness at the first thread. And they get categorized into four groups. Four group like start from the 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 millimeters at that area. The results show that in the 0 0.2 groups show very uh, significantly uh, less of the like a load bearing capacity and elastic limit. And if we see the, the expansion of the abutment, we find that in this group also, they create a more expansion in the axial and in the horizontal way. We can conclude that if you, the, two, the 0 0.2 millimeter coronal wall thickness show us the low elastic limit and have the high coronal diameter. So they lead to the problem of mechanical, like a school loosening and other mechanical failure. If you want to place the implant in the posterior area, they suggest that you should choose the thickness wall more than 0.3 millimeters for the long-term success of the mechanical properties. This is shown by the, this paper. Sometimes say they said that size does matter, and I agree, yeah, most of the case, you have to select the proper diameter of the implant. And some concept nowadays, there are some, some dentists recommend that if you want to press the implant in the posterior area, you should use the tissue level for the 
thickness of the wall. But for me, I m not agree totally because sometimes you can use the ICC in the posterior, but it, you need to select the proper diameter. Okay. I will finish the uh, my presentation with this case. This lady present to me. Uh, this is I can call it challenging case for me because this patient uh, was referred from my oral surgeon. Okay, and her chief complaint is like she like to have a beautiful smile. With this condition, so what is her history? She's Thai female, 32 years old. Diagnosis as the ectrodermal dysplasia with the skeletal cast tree deformity. The previous treatment was done by the two jaw surgery of the maxillofacial surgeon and the orthodontic treatment for a long time, but cannot correct the problem. So how to solve her shift complaint? She like to have the balance occlusion and the aesthetic, the beautiful smile. But the problem, one kind of problem, is the surgeon placed two implant for me already before I met the patient. So I can do the problem list like this. First is occlusion, right? She have the open bite, non occlude from premolar to premolar, missing tooth, missing teeth. Yeah, and teeth shape is like a peg shape and irregular shape. And two implant was installed. Okay. Already, I call this is a pro one problem because it is not the prosthetic driven; it's driven by the surgical, surgical already. So, I try to wax up impression, wax up. You can do analog or digital way. In this case, I do as analog. I wax by the hand, and then I try to make a preparation, making for the circonia, bridge, and crown. First, I correct the, the, in the front first, both upper and lower. And then at last, I try to correct the problem of the implant procedure with the bridge. So finally, the result is showing like this. She really agree, appreciate what we did for her because we t t totally changed a lot from the improbate smile into the next best version of this patient. So this is the example of How can the technology like uh, uh, circonier and the digital in the lab way that we can help us? So I would stress that the prosthetic driven implant planning is very important. Provide for the function and aesthetic. The ideal three-dimensional implant position is the key to the success. You can com uh, con you can communicate with the surgeon by the. That let them do the hard tissue and soft tissue management with the many fancy techniques like the bone graft until the soft tissue augmentation. But the result is you have to gain the ideal 3D implant position. In conclusion, I have to say that you have to combine clinical evidence, scientific research, and the technical skill together when you practice in the patient, and let the digital solution. Serve in you in the right way. Not let them do everything, but use it in the right way. Pick up what is best for you, and use it in, and provide for the patient. For the surgeon, yeah, the surgeon have to think like the prosthodontics. So we call surgeon mind in the prosthodontic or prosthetic driven planning for the ideal 3D implant position, and let them concern about the biomechanic of the prosthesis. For prosthodontists, you have to know about your your solution, the abutment alternatives. What is a choice? Retrievable processes always do it because in the long term, patient will come back to you for correct some problem or some complication, and provide and enhance the digital technology, especially in the prosthetic step. Okay, thank you very much for the. Deb, the Dental Implant Association of Bangladesh. Thank you for this kind, very nice pin. Now I'm organizer already. They give me the very beautiful. And let's keep in touch in the Facebook or this is a digital world, so we can contact you the digital media. I use this Facebook or email if you like. Thank you very much for your kind attention.